Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Sebastian and I'm a first year medical student studying at Sydney University. So as you can see just before, I've got out of bed, woken up, refreshed myself a little bit. So I'm feeling pretty good and I'm about to get stuck into some study. So every day we get one day off a week and it's not really one day off, it's called an independent learning day. Um, and usually I spend most of it just trying to catch up with lectures or content um, that I might've forgot or might have missed during the week. So it's about 10 o'clock right now and I'm probably gonna try review some lectures that I missed last week and make a few notes. So let's get stuck into it. But before I really get stuck into it, I have a quick scroll of social media, reply to a few friends, check a few emails and watch an odd video. Uh, once I'm feeling good, I really get into it. So we're currently in week two of cardiovascular block, which is the fifth and final block for us in the year. In the first week, we mainly looked at heart failure and all the complications in the severe late form of a heart disease. Whereas this week, we're looking more at the physiology of the heart. We've had a few introductory lectures and we're also doing the dreaded ECG, which everybody finds really difficult and everybody's gonna be met with it later in their career. So the first thing that I do in the day is actually to catch up on a seminar that I'd missed last week which was on the physiology of the ECG. And for all of you that don't know what it is, the ECG basically stands for an electrocardiogram. And it's a way that you can measure the electrical activity of the heart by placing different electrodes on different areas of the skin. But before I get onto that, I have a quick break, fill up my water bottle and stay hydrated. <sighs> so as I was saying, in a conventional 12 lead ECG, 10 electrodes are placed on the patient's body, four are placed on each of the patient's limb, so the right arm, right leg, left leg, left arm, and six are placed over the surface of the chest on different regions. By doing this, you're able to look at the electrical potential along different axes in different directions on the body, and it's a way that the cardiologist can look at it and figure out problems with the heart's rhythm, and it's a great way to get a bit more information, especially when a patient comes in with symptoms like chest pain, palpitations, breathlessness, or dizziness. So I've been catching up on the seminar. And it's actually quite interesting because in the class, there was a student that came up the front and they put a spirometry and blood pressure device on them, a Fenderpress device. So they measured his ventilation and his blood pressure as it changed with time. And I learned a cool new thing, which I'm sure a lot of you science students already know, that when you inspire, you actually increase heart rate because there's a baroreceptor reflex due to the stretch receptors when your lung inflates. So that was really interesting to see that in real time. So I've just got outside and this has to be one of the nicest days that we've had in so long. Um, we've just got out of winter last month and I can't wait to get into more sunny weather like this. So I just finished um, studying for about two or three hours just then. Uh, I was just mainly going over lectures and seminars that I'd missed the week before. Um, it was pretty good and so I'm just going to go to Coles, grab some food and make some lunch so I can um, have something to eat and then get back into it. Alrighty, so I got all my stuff, let's start cooking. Food was pretty good. I was pretty happy with it. You would never have... <sighs> and straight back into study. So once I finish lunch, it's a little bit later in the afternoon now, and I'm still trying to catch up with lectures. So this time we're looking at atherosclerosis. And in the lecture that I'm reviewing is all about lipids in heart disease. So I haven't really told you guys about how I usually study when I'm looking at lectures. I like to watch them on two times because Time is everything, you can pause it, you can come back to points, and I find it really good, especially when the lecturer has a slower talking voice. And so what I like to do 
is I like to watch the lecture on one screen. I like to have a web browser open another one where I look at words or look at concepts that I'm not familiar with that the lecture has gone through. And on another screen, I have my Anki flash deck. And in that deck, I like to write any big concepts that the lecturer has stressed on. So either in the form of a important diagram, or if he says something really important, I'll transfer it directly. I'll capture that message, put it in a flashcard so I can have a look at it later and I find that really helpful. And at the same time, I have my iPad where I'm jotting down anything that he's saying, scribbling ideas, drawing little mind maps that helps me to really consolidate what the lecture has been going through. And it just feels really nice to have my own notes at the end of a lecture. So I'm doing a bunch of things at once, but I find it's really helpful uh, when doing lectures by writing, listening, talking through concepts, and then capturing things into my Anki deck, which I can look at later. So tomorrow we actually have a pathology practical on atherosclerosis. For those of you that don't know what that is, atherosclerosis is a inflammatory process of the vessel, which involves very, very chronic changes where you get fatty deposits and plaque buildup in the artery wall, which actually makes the lumen smaller over time. So it essentially occludes your arteries. And they can't pump blood as efficiently. A fun fact that I found really interesting was that we actually develop fatty streaks in our arteries as early as the age of two. So this process is lifelong. It happens not just for old people, but it's happening with young people right now. And it continues as we age. So occasionally on my study breaks, um, as I'm going downstairs to fill up my water bottle, um, I like to uh, you know, say hi to my brother. He's not always uh, inclined to see me. Go away, please. This is not going on your video, right? Get lost, please. So it's hit that time in the afternoon when my brain's feeling pretty worked. I've reviewed all the lectures from last week. I caught up with everything that I need to do. So I reward myself by having a small study break where I watch a few YouTube videos, message a few friends, and just really kick back and take an hour or so where I can just relax and not think about anything. So after my self-indulgent little study break, it's a little bit later in the afternoon now. I've just opened my new ECG book, which I received last week. And everybody's told me that this little book, ECG Made Easy, is the Bible and the go-to for everybody out there trying to learn what all these squiggly lines mean. So I take the effort of reading through the first chapter and I plan to progressively go through each chapter every few days to just make sure that by the end of the cardiovascular block, I'm feeling quite confident and I'm feeling quite good about reading and interpreting ECGs. So I found the first chapter very useful. It went through the real basics about what a P wave is, QRS complex T wave, and it also went through some ECG examples of a few pathologies like a myocardial infarction or what an ischemic heart injury would look like. And I found that really useful about what all the patterns meant and what you should really be looking out for. Like with everything, a systematic process where you go through sequential steps is always useful for any sort of data interpretation. Hey guys, so as you just saw, I finished the first chapter of the ECG book. Interesting read, I'm gonna try and continue, go through that in the next couple of days. But now I'm off to athletics, which is in about 10 minutes or so, so I'm just gonna quickly drive down to the track. I'll be back in about an hour or so. So I just got to the track and we're starting to warm up. I obviously can't show me actually running on the track because we're in a big group of people and it's obviously too hard to film. So here's just a quick snippet of me warming up and me stretching before we get into some big runs later on. Hey guys, so I just got back from training and I'm pretty tired. Um, I'm just gonna quickly do some warm down stretches, have something to eat and shower. And then I'm gonna get onto some pre-readings for my anatomy prac tomorrow. And I think I also have a pathology prac, so I'm just gonna get onto that. So with our anatomy pracs, we are required to bring our notes from home. This is me printing. So I like to print my notes beforehand and make sure that I have everything in the class because we're not allowed electronics. Tomorrow is our first anatomy practical and we're looking at the external and internal features of the heart as well as other aspects of the thorax. So before every practical, our university provides us with a pre-practical video which we can watch where they go through all the different compartments on the different identifications that we have to make so that when we get into the actual class, it's a lot easier and we sort of know what to do and we're not like lost ducks waiting for the tutor to answer all of our questions. And once I've got all of my pre-work objectives out of the way, I feel like it's a good time to turn off the computer, pack up my bag and start getting ready for bed. Alrighty, so that pretty much 
uh, wraps up my day. There's not much left to do. I got through most of my objectives, so I'm pretty happy with that. It's running at about, I think it's about 11 o'clock now, so I'm just gonna start getting ready for bed, unwind, check out some stuff, and then crash in a bit, I'm pretty tired. This is a different type of video for me, so if you enjoyed it, uh, please let me know in the comments below, like and subscribe. Thanks for sticking around, thanks for tuning in. Until next time, I'm Sebastian, stay sharp.